All right, so here's what I want to do. I want to give you a brief introduction on bone forming tumors and then focus on osteoblastomas, specifically distinguishing osteoblastomas from osteosarcomas or the so-called osteoblastoma-like osteosarcomas. So when I think of bone forming tumors, I think of them in two classes, one composed of lamella bone. And in fact, there's only one class of bone forming tumors that shows lamella bone, and that's an osteoma. And when I talk of lamella bone, I'm talking of bone with these parallel seams. This to me is lamella bone. In fact, the majority of bone forming tumors do not form lamella bone. You do not see this lamellar architecture. In fact, they're composed of woven bone, as shown here in this picture. So osteomas, you're never going to mistake that for an osteosarcoma. That's an easy diagnosis. Osteoid osteoma, not going to confuse that with an osteosarcoma. Now, I know fibrous dysplasia and osteofibrous dysplasia traditionally are not classified as bone forming tumors, but they do have a fair amount of bone and hence have placed them there. This is a completely different ball game. Osteosarcoma is obviously malignant, osteoblastoma is benign, and often there is a great challenge in distinguishing some osteoblastomas from osteosarcomas, and that's really going to be the heart of this small talk. So very quickly, some demographic data. This is a disease of in the second and third decade of life, although you can see this in older individuals, twice as more common in men than in women. This is something really important to remember. Where do these occur? The majority of them occur in the spine. And again, it's important to know where in the spine they occur. It's the posterior element. It is not the body. The body often is affected by giant cell tumors of bone. It's the posterior element and the spinous process. Other sites are the long bones and the craniofacial skeleton. All right, I have no intention of making radiologists out of you, and I am no radiologist either. That said, you do need to have a basic grasp of what each lesion looks like to the radiologist. Now, this is an osteoblastoma. One, notice that the posterior elements are involved and not the body. The body is, tends not to be involved or only focally involved. Two, notice that it is bone forming. It looks very much like cortical bone. So this is the lesion and it is clearly looks ivory white like the cortical bone here adjacent. Three, the, it seems to be well circumscribed, right? So it isn't as if it's falling out and spilling into the muscle and that suggests that it is benign. So this is a very classic osteoblastoma involving the spine. So here's an osteoblastoma involving the fibula, and you'll notice that there's certainly tumor here that seems to be well circumscribed, but you'll also notice these cystic spaces. These are ABC-like or aneurysmal bone cyst-like areas that you can see in an osteoblastoma. So this is a secondary aneurysmal bone cyst. All right, it's now time to define an osteoblastoma. So an osteoblastoma is defined by the presence of bone, woven bone, surrounded by osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are plasmacytoid-like cells that rim bone that have the nucleus at one end, the cytoplasm at the other end. And it almost appears to my eye with osteoblasts that the nuclei are being extruded from the cell. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you, forget it. You'll also notice that between these pieces of bone rimmed by osteoblast, there's a relatively loose edematous network of fibroconnective tissue. Also notice that these cells are rather monotonous and do not show the traditional atypia, and they certainly do not show mitotic, significant mitotic activity. Now, if you hunt the entire slide, you might find a mitotic figure, but they are certainly not obvious. You'll also notice the osteoclast-type giant cells, but not quite in the density 
that might make you think of a giant cell tumor of bone. Now, as you well know, rules are meant to be broken. So what I showed you is a very classic osteoblastoma. But in other cases, less commonly, fortunately, the cells could appear larger. They could, the nuclei could look more vesicular with big prominent nucleoli. Now, when these are present in sheets, these neoplasms used to be referred to as aggressive osteoblastoma. That term has been abandoned because clinically these are not aggressive. They are now referred to as epithelioid osteoblastomas or osteoblastomas with epithelioid features. The bottom line is remember that some osteoblastomas can look atypical, but they should not look obviously malignant. All right, so here's the osteoblastoma, right? There's lots of bone. It does not look lace-like, at least at this magnification. Time for a key feature alert. The one thing that osteoblastoma does not do and the majority of osteosarcomas do do is that osteoblastomas do not infiltrate into adjacent bone. So here's pre-existing bone. The tumor is not infiltrating the pre-existing bone. In fact, the tumor typically forms a shell of reactive bone at the periphery. So key feature alert, osteoblastoma is bone surrounded by epithelioid osteoblasts, or they may not be epithelioid, but the cells and the tumor does not infiltrate pre-existing bone. Now, this is such a key feature of an osteoblastoma that I had to show you a second image. Here's the osteoblastoma, and notice the tumor stops dead here. This is a shell of reactive bone. The tumor does not infiltrate that shell of reactive bone and into the adjacent native or pre-existing bone. Okay, so time for a key may be seen alert. And the key may be seen alert here is that you may see blue bone like this in an osteoblastoma. You see it in other tumors as well. You see it in aneurysmal bone cysts as well. It does not mean a whole lot. The bottom line is you may see it. Here's another key, you may see it alert, and this time it is the presence of cartilage. So you may see cartilage like this. This is not to be mistaken for a chondroblastic osteosarcoma. You could see a fracture callus. This does not look like a fracture callus. Instead, this is a part of the bone this is, again, a, I may see this feature in osteoblastoma, but most osteoblastomas will not have this feature. All right, so switch gears, and now we're going to talk about a key. You will not see this feature, and you will not see lace-like network of osteoid, although what is lace-like to me may not be lace-like to you. This, to me, is lace-like. You may not see significant atypia as shown here. These nuclei are much more pleomorphic. The chromatin is far more granular and hyperchromatic. And as I'll show you in the next picture, you may not see atypical mitotic figures as seen here. Again, notice that lace-like osteoid. This is an osteosarcoma that masquerading, that is, appears to masquerade as an osteoblastoma. So two key features you may not see is marked cellular atypia, lace-like osteoid, and mitotic figures. And that actually turns out to be three features. All right, so I had two images on, two sets of images on Twitter, case A, the upper images, and case B, the lower images. This is the upper image. And on very low power view, you can see that there are large seams of bone, and then there are rather these blue cellular areas, and I'll show you an image from both parts. So here's the area with a lot of bone. Uh, to me, this doesn't particularly look lace-like. In fact, there are broad seams of bone lined by, eh, these are barely osteoblasts, but they certainly do not look atypical. I'm not hugely worried that they are malignant. There are other areas that looked a lot more cellular. In fact, the osteoclast-type giant cells are staring back at you. Here they are, the osteoclast-type giant cells. 
So basically sheets of these osteoblasts, and you can see they don't look particularly atypical, at least not to my eye, but of course the pr usual problem with pathology, what may appear atypical to you may not appear atypical to me. So there is a significant level of subjectivity. So if you have a challenging case, feel free to send it to me. I'll figure that out. I'm only kidding. Uh, here are the more epithelioid areas, but here you can see bone, again, lined by these osteoblasts. Most importantly, alert, alert, alert. Notice that there is no infiltration of pre-existing bone, at least none that we could see. But more importantly, in this image, there is a shell or an encasing of reactive bone around the lesion, and that certainly helps me sleep better at night. This, in the old days, would have been called a aggressive osteoblastoma. Today, we'd call it an osteoblastoma with epithelioid features. All right, so now it's time for the lower of those two images. And notice this sort of lace-like deposition of osteoid. This bothers me. This is not typical for an osteoblastoma. If anything, this is more like an osteosarcoma. Although if you look at the individual cells themselves, here's an osteoclast coming along, uh, coming along for the right. These osteoblasts, I mean, they look epithelioid, but am I hugely concerned about the atypia? Perhaps not. So the atypia doesn't really do it for me in this case. But alert, alert, alert. Look at this. This is pre-existing bone. What do I mean by pre-existing bone? This is lamellar bone. This is not bone formed by the tumor. This was bone there before the tumor ever appeared. And this tumor streaming between the bone, surrounding it and encasing this pre-existing bone. This is diagnostic for an osteosarcoma. So alert, alert, alert. Infiltration of pre-existing bone is a defining feature of osteosarcoma. And this is a lovely example of an osteoblastoma like osteosarcoma. Now, if we did not have this feature, we would be in a boatload of trouble. Now, can you do something to make this distinction between an osteoblastoma like osteosarcoma and an osteosarcoma? Now, it turns out that most osteoblastomas and osteoid osteomas have a rearrangement of FOS, the gene FOS, more rarely FOS B. And you can exploit that in your immunohistochemistry lab because most osteoblastoma, not all, show immunohistochemical reactivity for FOS or FOS B less commonly, while osteosarcomas are typically negative for FOS. So, we certainly have access to this antibody and we do use it in challenging cases. Again, thank you for your attention. Uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you for, um, for listening to this talk. There are several other talks and there's the link to my YouTube channel. Thanks again and bye-bye.